Today I'm going for my first run in the ASICS Gel Nimbus 22. Coming in, yeah, flex. I just wanna win, yeah. L A B B, who we running with, yeah. Two two three three, I'm on ten again, yeah. State your name, big big dope on flame. I just switched the lanes, damn he did it again. I just flipped the pain, stripping and dipping in base, slab on everything. Swimming, you sinking away, cause I got big racks coming. I put my low racks on it. I ain't skip past losses, I had to get back off it. 6.34 miles, 8 minutes, 4 seconds per mile, running along the lakefront in Chicago in the new redesigned A6 Gel Nimbus 22. Now before I get to my thoughts on that, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me early for the purposes of review by Roadrunner Sports, but neither Roadrunner Sports nor A6 nor anyone is paying me to make this video or to wear the shoe, and no one's going to get a chance to review any of my thoughts or this footage until you guys get a chance to see it on YouTube. With the disclosures out of the way, let's take a look at the ASICS Gel Nimbus 22. Now this is a shoe that ASICS lists on their website as a shoe for maximum shock absorption. And so to accomplish that, what they have is uh, a uniquely designed gel pod in the back here. I've never seen gel look quite like this. It's an unusual design. This one, it wraps all the way around, which makes me think that it's got to be a bigger gel pod or pocket in there and that's something that i definitely felt uh in com combination with the gel is asics flight foam this is flight foam propel which is a foam that i do have experience with and i've generally liked in the past and they've done some crazy kind of molding to it which uh i really like it on top with the upper they have a very breathable material although uh, the styling is a bit aggressive it, to me, kind of walking around in the shoe and running in the shoe. It looked like almost like an optical illusion with the way this is kind of like a little bit shimmery. And there's kind of two layers there, one that has more holes in it and one that has kind of the color on top, or at least that's kind of what it looks like to me. Uh, it's an interesting pattern. I think it's going to be a little bit polarizing in terms of whether you guys like or don't like the patterns that are going on in the upper. And the rest of the upper, what we have is kind of a lot of moderate amounts of everything though. The upper is breathable, but not the thinnest material, but also not thick. The tongue is a little bit padded, but kind of more of a standard tongue, not a super plush tongue. Laces are a little bit thick, but not super thick. Padding around the heel cup is ample, but not too thick as well. And there's also a substantial heel counter, but not the most aggressive heel counter I've ever seen from ASIC. So, so the upper, I would say overall, is comfortable, but with some restraint. And so I, I like what I'm seeing overall in the upper for a shoe that's supposed to be in kind of the max cushion or for the more comfort oriented, longer mileage type of shoe. The other thing I do want to mention is that there is a very comfortable insole in here. So very comfortable to run in. You can definitely feel the softness there. Also really great step in comfort and for just walking around, you definitely feel the softness of that insole there. But overall, what I want to get to is how does this all kind of work together, especially with some of the aggressive things that they've gone and done with the midsole in terms of kind of cutting out this part of what would normally be foam and having substantial grooves and cutouts in the midsole here. And I would say that it's definitely a soft shoe. So I feel that max comfort emphasis that they're going for. It's really roomy in the toe box as well. I do think this is gonna be released also in a wide as well. But for those of you who don't have feet that quite need a wide size, I think that you are going to like it. I almost found at times like the toe box was too wide. And sometimes I felt like my foot was trying to find a way to feel snug in there. I think probably a little bit of that could have been resolved with some tighter lacing up top. But for my first run, I did feel like that there was plenty of room, if not almost too much room in the toe box for my personal tastes. The other thing though that I felt was there was a little bit of a speed penalty. And a lot of times that happens when you're going from uh, a daily trainer or a faster day shoe to your more plush max cushion shoes. The cost for that comfort, the cost for that softness is speed. I was expecting more of a penalty though. So there is a little bit, I felt like I had to work just a touch 
harder to get to certain paces on my run today, but today's run uh, didn't have a problem hitting any of the paces that I wanted to hit for today. And I almost got kind of a disconnected sensation, which I think maybe is intentional. But overall, while my foot strike uh, felt smooth, I kind of felt like there was two shoes here. In the back, I felt like I was set up a little bit higher on a bit of a platform and I felt the softness and the impact absorption of the gel, which is great. But then when it came to the transition to the forefoot, I felt like I definitely felt this gap here, which I wasn't expecting to feel that, but I felt like there were two kind of different shoes. And I mentioned the heel counter earlier. Uh, this one, uh, I felt like agreed with me pretty well. It wasn't fighting me or trying to control me too much, but it is substantial in here. So I think those of you whose angles are moving around a little bit uh, might really appreciate the fact that it's gonna keep you locked in and keep your ankle from moving around too much. Uh, now, the last thing that I'll kind of mention for this shoe is that there is still a ton of thick rubber on the shoe, but because there's so many cutouts and grooves along the shoe, one of the thing is that having cutouts of this kind of shape and pattern make for a more flexible midsole and a flexible shoe. So that definitely helped with the transition in the foot strike as your foot is hitting the ground and then towing off into the next stride. So I felt that as well. But also because there's all these grooves here and kind of, I guess this is ASIC's closest thing to having exposed foam on the midsole, there's just less rubber or places for ASICs to put rubber. So even though we still have the AHAR, the high abrasion rubber on the midsole, and it's still really thick, uh, there's less of it, uh, saving a little bit of weight. So uh, another shoe from ASICs, this one isn't a, a, a very light shoe, but again, for something that is max cushion and from ASICs, this feels in hand and on foot lighter uh, than what it looks or than what I might otherwise expect. So for those of you who are looking for a little bit more control and support in the ankle and are looking for a little bit more cushion for those longer runs uh, or just looking for a little bit more cushion for your daily trainer shoot in general, I think this is something that you might wanna take a look at. If you're an ASICS fan, I think that it definitely has a lot of those ASICS qualities that I think people really like about the brand, but I think it's been modernized in a way to make it a little bit lighter and a little bit smoother of a shoe to run in. Another shoe that I think shows a little bit of a direction that ASICS is trying to move, and I appreciate it. Funny thing is, I just did a review on the ASICS GT2000 version eight, and the comments from that video were particularly interesting. Half of you guys were like, finally, ASICS is doing something to modernize the line. And the other half of you were like, ah, another shoe that ASICS is ruining when they were just fine before. So I think that I can see the tension that ASICS is trying to kind of navigate is that some of you guys are super diehard ASICS fans and want it to never change at all. And the rest of you, are people that loved ASICs before and now just wish that things would change and kind of modernize just a little bit. So I think that they're trying to do a little bit of that with this shoe as well. Uh, the styling I think is a bit aggressive, uh, at least in terms of the stripes and the pattern and like the black and white. But overall, I think this is a silhouette that I like. I like the direction that this is going. Uh, I like that ASICs is trying to do new things and try new things that are out there. For those of you who think, look at this and think it looks absolutely hideous, I think the ASICS Gel Nimbus 21 is still available for sale. So go and stock up and then next year you'll be onto this one. And I think you're probably going to like it as well. So those are my thoughts on the ASICS Gel Nimbus 22. Release date is October 1st. I think the purchase price is gonna be 150 US. Uh, before I go, I do want to talk about our new charity runner for this week. This week, it's going to be Emily McCool, who's going to be running the New York City Marathon and raising money for the Brain Injury Association of New York State. And this is a cause that's close to her heart because in 2016, she suffered a traumatic brain injury herself in the form of a concussion when she was hit by a car while she was riding her bicycle. And she's been living with the symptoms of that ever since. She currently suffers from anosmia, which is a loss of a sense of smell. Uh, so she wants to help raise money for those who are also living with the effects and symptoms of traumatic brain injury. I was happy to donate $70 to her fundraising efforts, and I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I'll see you tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?